to David versus Goliath in a sense here. The Duke Blue Devils, 24th in the nation, coming off a good year that ended badly with that big loss to Florida State in the ACC title game, are going to have to go from one Heisman winner to another as they take on 21st ring Texas A&M and Johnny Football himself, Johnny Manziel. All right, we're going to start this game by talking about Duke. A big surprise this year for the Blue Devils. They played really solid throughout the entire season. And, I mean, they, I don't know how it happened, really. They just kind of kept silently winning games and sneaking their way up the ladder in the ACC. And before you knew it, they'd won the Coastal Division and were going to the title game. Um, they beat North Carolina Central, beat Memphis. They got beat 38-14 by Georgia Tech. And then a 58-55 heartbreaker against Pitt. But they followed that up by winning the remainder of their regular season schedule. They beat Troy, won handily over Navy, beat Virginia, survived a 13-10 victory at Virginia Tech, beat NC State, won 48-30 over a good Miami team, won at Wake Forest, survived the rivalry game with North Carolina 27-25, and that put them in the ACC title game against Jameis Winston. But unfortunately for them, uh, their quarterback, Anthony Boone, struggled. He threw three picks. Winston threw four touchdowns. And the 45-7 to final really just showed Duke just wasn't ready for that game. Um, they tried. They were in it for a little bit, but they just never really stood a chance. Their offense struggled. Their defense was on the field too much, and they got outclassed. But that still shouldn't put a damper on what was an amazing year for Duke, who's really establishing themselves. After making the Belk Bowl last year, they worked their way up to this one. They're now in the bowl that is sponsored by the company I work for, Chick-fil-A. It's a great day at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> uh, Duke really looks pretty solid for this, but they're going to be major underdogs, and there's a good reason for that. I mean, Their offense is very balanced, 234 passing and 173 running. Those are both median in terms of yardage, but overall it's not bad combined. It's over 400 yards a game, which is what you kind of look for in an offense. They had 31.6 points per game, which is 15th in the nation, and gave up 24.7, which is 47th. I mean, they never won any huge games this year, but they won the games they were supposed to, and that's what got them in this position. Really anything from here on out is just a win for them, but... They're going to kind of have to struggle in this game because their starting running back, Jayla Duncan, has been suspended from the team for a violation of an academic policy. And that's really, it's going to be interesting. It's going to leave it on the running back, Sneed, who had 547 yards on 90 carries and only one touchdown this year. He's really going to have to carry a lot of the load for this team in this game. Uh, Boone's going to probably have some struggles, but... Oh no, we'll get to that in a minute, because now I want to talk to you guys about the Texas A&M Aggies. Johnny Football coming off his Heisman candidacy last year and winning it. He was kind of coming into this year hoping to get the second straight Heisman as a sophomore this time after being the first one to get it as a freshman. This team had the sky as the limit here. They were national title contenders early on. I mean, Johnny Football missed the first half of the very first game because of a suspension. But he came out, they already had to leave when he came out, and they won 52-31. to They played Sam Houston State, dominated 65-28. And then they played Alabama in kind of the first real tilt for them this year. And it was a high-scoring game. They pushed Bama to the edge, but Alabama was able to win 49-42. And that really kind of knocked Texas A&M off. Everybody kind of slept on them after that. I don't know, I guess it almost exposed them because they kind of struggled from there on out against ranked teams. They didn't win a single game against ranked opponents all year. They beat SMU, beat Arkansas, survived Ole Miss 41-38, but then lost 45-41 against Auburn, who was 24th at the time. They beat Vanderbilt, UTEP, and Mississippi State 51-41, but then their last two games of the year, Johnny Manziel struggled against LSU, and they lost 34-10. And then Missouri just out him and won 28-21 to put themselves in the SEC title game at the time. Overall, this is a team that's defense, struggles. They are, gave up 30.9 points a game, 89th in the nation. They don't run the ball too much, 44th in the nation, 187 per game. But Johnny Football is going to be slinging the rock a lot. They were 7th in the nation with 350.9 yards per game throwing the ball. Menzo had 3,700 yards, 33 touchdowns. He's a monster. If he has any time at all back there, he can run around and make plays happen. 
can also run the ball. He had 686 yards rushing with eight touchdowns running. It's 41 touchdowns on the year. Uh, he has his big boy Mike Evans to throw to, 1,300 receiving yards, 20.3 yards per catch average, 12 touchdowns. He's a monster. They are also having a couple issues, though, as their defense is having their freshman linebacker, Darian Claiborne, suspended because he was arrested on drug possession charges. He uh, was tied for the team lead. He had 89 tackles, but he's not going to be available for this. That helped the Dukes cause. Overall, this is going to be rough on Duke. Uh, they average over 130 less yards per game, 538 to 408. Manziel just throws the ball so well. They run a little better with Johnny Football having that dual threat. They score on over 10 more points per game, 43 to 31. This is Duke's, I mean, Duke had a great year. And Anthony Boone has the right mindset for this. He doesn't want to try to outdo a Manziel. He says guys that like that, like that they're going to put up a lot of numbers. And to try to go out there and compete with them is when you'll make mistakes and cost your team. He was right for saying that. It's not going to be on him. If Duke's going to win this game, they're going to have to establish the run and keep Manziel off the field. It's going to be a struggle up for him. I think that Texas a and going to show up big in the Georgia Dome for this game. I think they probably got the inside track on the t on this game. I just I don't know. Duke had an amazing year, but I still I just don't feel they're ready for this game. One Heisman candidate already drilled him, and I think this one's going to too. I think that Johnny Football is going to have a monster game in what could be his last college football game as part of the Texas a and Aggies, and I think the Aggies are going to roll over Duke. I think the final score is going to be something in the range of a 47 to 27 victory for the Aggies. Duke will put up some points because that Aggies defense struggles, but overall Johnny Football is going to get the job done. And that'll be the end for Duke and Texas A&M. Hail Manziel, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, if you guys agree with me, let me know. If you don't, let me know. And good luck to both teams. Later.